Hey there, crafty friends. My name's Misty and welcome to Gleespin Designs. If you're new here, let me know down in the comments. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Also, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And in today's video, I have nine pumpkin DIYs. So let's get crafting. For the first five pumpkins, you could really use any pumpkins that you would like. I used two of those notorious orange pumpkins from Dollar Tree, this rotten looking pumpkin from Dollar Tree, as well as this little white one that is new, I do believe. Both of those are new. And then I did also thrift a really large pumpkin that I cannot wait to show you guys. I easily removed all of the stems and then I painted these three pumpkins with the white rust-oleum chalk paint. The other two pumpkins I didn't really have to paint and some of these you don't have to paint either but I did just want to make sure I had a nice base coat in case anything shows through. Once they are all painted white we can start off with pumpkin number one. I'm going to start off with the easiest pumpkin first most of you probably do know this DIY, but I love making these every year in the different styles of fabric that Dollar Tree has. And again, this is why I wanted to have that white like base coat because some of the Dollar Tree fabric can be pretty see-through. So I wanted to make sure that I really didn't have any weird coloring showing through. So next I'm going to take this flannel looking fabric from Dollar Tree. I did make a hole up at the top of the pumpkin and you just seen me do that by my scissors. It's super easy. And then you're just going to start gathering the fabric up, going around the pumpkin and just pushing it down into that hole. And see, this is another reason why I love making these is because they are so easy. In one of my recent videos, I also did a sunflower one and I love how that turned out. The Crafty Quinn here on YouTube actually did these with some of the farmhouse fabric from Dollar Tree and they turned out absolutely gorgeous. I don't know about you guys, but I love farmhouse and let me tell you, they are amazing. So definitely go check her out. Because those styrofoam pumpkins have those original horrible styrofoam green stems, I did go ahead and use the wood stems from Dollar Tree. I love using these as pumpkin stems. They are absolutely perfect. And you can also use them for many other things as well. To dress this pumpkin up a little bit, I added some hot glue around the stem and then I just added some of the Dollar Tree Spanish moss and I did make sure that I had it kind of cascading over the side of the pumpkin a little bit. Some of the pumpkins have more Spanish moss than others and you can also do these without Spanish moss if you would like. I do believe that's the Spanish moss. I get the Spanish moss and reindeer moss mixed up all the time. Anyways, we're moving on to the bow. So for the bow, I'm using some raffia and I just do the cancer awareness like ribbon shape and then I grab it up at the top of the loop and just gather it at the center and then I'm going to use some of that leather vinyl from Dollar Tree and I just cut a little sliver of it off and then I use that to wrap it around to hold my bow together and that little tiny piece of leather really kind of ties in with a lot of the other pumpkins if you get what I'm saying. I wanted these pumpkins to kind of all go together, but also be different to where they could just be on their own as well. So I just tied in a few things from the other pumpkins with some of the other pumpkins so that they all would somewhat go together, but then also again, look gorgeous all on their own. So then I just kind of cut down the raffia. Again, I cut it down a little bit more and I'm going to glue it right to that stem on the pumpkin. And that is how quick and easy you can make these pumpkins and you can dress them up in so many different ways. Here's how this pumpkin turned out and I will also be showing all of them together once they are done being made. And now let's move on to pumpkin number two. This pumpkin is probably definitely my favorite. Even though it's the smallest, it is just so stunning. So I'm using the smaller pumpkin that I had painted white, and then I'm going to use the Dollar Tree leather in the color white as well. I bought this paper cutter off of Amazon for very, very cheap. I will have it linked down in the description box. It cuts so many different things, even fabric, it's great. So I just cut about a half inch or maybe a little bit more strips into the leather vinyl. And I cut a whole bunch of them, more than actually what I really needed, but you do want to cut quite a few. 
I would say you want to cut at least 25 of them just to be safe. Add a little bit of hot glue onto the bottom of one of the pieces of leather, then I just glued it onto the bottom of the pumpkin, wrap it completely around, but you want to make sure that you stay on those hump parts of the pumpkin, at least for the first layer, and you'll see what I mean by that here shortly. So basically, you're not going to place the piece of leather right next to the previous piece of leather. You want to place it onto the next hump that is on the pumpkin. And I just keep repeating the same process, gluing the strips of leather to the bottom of the pumpkin and wrapping them completely around, but making sure I stay only on those humps. You'll see why doing the humps first is so important once we get the first layer done. And when I say layer, I do mean once we have all of those humps covered, that is your first layer. And here's what it should look like once you have that done and you can move on to the second layer. And for the second layer, I take the leather strips and I add some hot glue onto the bottom just like I did previously, glue it to the bottom of the pumpkin. And now we are going to start placing it into the divots in the pumpkin. And when you're wrapping the leather around, you want to make sure you pull nice and tight so that the leather kind of really gets down into that divot on the pumpkin. It really is simple and easy. You just cover the curves of the pumpkin first, and then you're gonna go in and cover the divots. So you just place the leather strips going around, pulling nice and tight so that you can see the divots and look how gorgeous this is already turning out. And you just keep repeating those steps until the pumpkin is covered. For the stem, I use this Hello Hobby Cafe Noir chalk paint. I got it from Walmart. It is super inexpensive. I just love the color and I just dry brushed a little bit onto the stem. I always say this Cafe Noir paint is like the perfect melted chocolate color. Because the pumpkin is wrapped in the leather, we can no longer push the stem back down inside. So I just cut off the part that sticks down into the pumpkin. And then I just add a little bit of hot glue and glue it right to the top of the pumpkin. And to be quite honest, I think this pumpkin is absolutely beautiful, just like this. So simple and stunning. But of course, I have to go a step further. And like I said, I kind of want them to go a little bit together as well as look great separate. So I just put a tiny bit of the Spanish moss around the stem of this pumpkin. And then, yes, I totally just took a leaf right off my garland that is on my desk and I'm going to glue it right into the onto the top of the pumpkin and I do go ahead and glue two of those leaves down. Dollar Tree sells these stems that have these little white sunflowers on them, at least the tag says sunflowers, and I just use one of them and glue it right to where the leaves are, and this pumpkin is done. Once again, this one is definitely my favorite. I think it is just so gorgeous and high-end looking. A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you like learning new skills, you will love Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes, all taught by experts from design, photography, business, technology, self-growth, and so many more. I've actually been recently taking a class called Learn Adobe After Effects CC for Beginners by Jody Vandeput, and I love this class, and I learned so many new things like this and this here. And that's what I'm saying. They have classes for everything, even bettering your YouTube channel. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on all the hot must to know topics so you can improve your skills and learn new things. Skillshare is also more affordable than most of the platforms out there. And what's even better is the first 1000 people to sign up to Skillshare using the link down below in the description box will get one month of Skillshare completely free. You have got to check them out. And once again, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now let's move on to pumpkin number three. Oh my goodness, you guys, look at this ginormous, huge, ugly pumpkin that I found at a local thrift shop. I paid 25 cents for it, and how could I not? Because we are definitely going to give this thing a makeover. And for this one, I'm going to be using the brown faux leather from Dollar Tree, and the strips I cut on this one were at least two inches. You want to make sure that if it's a larger pumpkin and it has larger curves, you want to at least be able to curve or cover the curves on the pumpkin. 
I definitely went ahead and pulled off this stem so that we can make it look a little bit better. And for the leather that is going to be on this pumpkin, I cut kind of half circles up at the top of the leather. And I apologize, you guys, if you hear any kids playing or the mower going across the street. I live across the street from a humongous park. And yeah, I swear every time I'm doing a voiceover, they have to mow the entire park. So I do apologize if you guys hear any of that. So unlike the last one, I did this in just the strips because you, well, it's a large pumpkin and you're not going to be able to wrap it completely around. So I actually started up at the top where the stem is on this pumpkin instead of starting at the bottom, gluing the strips to the bottom of the pumpkin first so that I knew that the up top where the stem is at is going to look really nice once I'm done because I'm starting up there and actually placing the leather strips where I want them. And once you add the stem back on, you really don't see any of those like curved parts of the leather. It really just looks all so nice and finished. And with just like the last pumpkin, you're going to keep doing that until you have that first layer done, which is technically all of the curves on the pumpkin. And then you go back in and start covering all of the divots that are in the pumpkin. I'm using the words curves and divots and all these like weird, you guys, I hope you know what I'm saying, <laughs> but yeah, so you can see, and look how gorgeous that looks. I love this pumpkin so much. The leather ones are definitely my favorite. But again, I know I keep saying it because this is very repetitive. You just basically want to cover the pumpkin with a leather, you guys. And again, look how great that looks up at the top where the stem is going to be instead of how it looks down here at the bottom. That's exactly why I started with gluing the leather strips by the stem first instead of down at the bottom of the pumpkin because I had more control of how it looks and how it turns out in the end. And once you have your pumpkin completely covered, it should look like this. And you guys, I am so obsessed with these. I think they're so fun and so neat. However, this ugliness on the bottom is, it's just gotta go. So I went ahead and cut off a nice rectangle piece of the faux leather. You can cut a circle and make it look even better, but I am not the best at cutting circles. So I just cut out a rectangle and added some hot glue to it, and then I'm going to glue it to the bottom of the pumpkin to give it a nice, cleaner, finished look. But of course, look what I do. I, I dropped it. Oh my gosh, I was so mad at myself. But it actually, the hot glue rubs right off of this leather really, really easily with your finger if you do mess up or get any hot glue on the leather like I did. And for the stem, again, I used that Cafe Noir chalk paint, and I went ahead and painted the stem with that nice chocolatey brown color. Once the stem is dry, you can place it right back onto the pumpkin, and like I said, if you want to leave it nice and plain, look how clean that leather looks around the stem. I definitely think I'm going to be making a few more of these, but leaving them plain because they are just gorgeous, just as is. However, with this one, I did want to take a tiny bit of the Spanish moss yet again and kind of have it go with the other pumpkins as well, and I just glue that Spanish moss right around the stem of the pumpkin, just like we did the other pumpkins. I want the leather to be like the main focal point, so the rest of the decorations on the pumpkin I do want to keep pretty simple. So I just used some Dollar Tree Raffia, which you guys, this stuff felt way more like straw. I don't know why it was so thick, but this end of the Raffia was just super, super thick. Either way, I gathered it up into just a little bundle and then I take some of that Dollar Tree leather and wrap it around the center and hot glue it into place. Once I had the leather glued and in place, I went ahead and cut off the excess and then I used my hands to just kind of fan out that raffia so that it has more of the bow shape. Once I have it fanned out enough to where I like it, I just add a little bit of hot glue onto the back and glue it right to the stem of the pumpkin. I am just loving how this pumpkin is turning out, but of course I have to go one more step further and have you guys seen these leather tags at Dollar Tree? They are super neat. I love them so much. They have the little leaf and then they have the pumpkin. Some say blessed, some say grateful, and some th say thankful. It just depends on which two you get. So all I did was just cut the blessed pumpkin off and I'm going to glue it right onto the bow area kind of right underneath the leather 
And that is it. You have a huge leather pumpkin. And you guys, I love, love these pumpkins so much. I know I've said it quite a few times, but they are just so gorgeous. And I could only imagine the prices that leather pumpkins are online. And now we are on pumpkin number four. For this pumpkin, we're using the pumpkin that I swear I had like a rotten look to it. I don't know why they made it that color. But anyways, then we are actually going to use a hula skirt from Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is take the hula skirt out of the packaging and I'm going to kind of spread it out. And as you can see, the strands are kind of like in each individual little groups that are kind of almost like a macrame type knot. I know it has a certain name to it. Let me know down in the comments what that name's called. I can't remember. But either way, they are kind of like individually on there and each group has a few strands of the hula skirt. So I wanted to add some color to this. So I'm going to use the Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel and I'm just going to start dry brushing this all over the hula skirt. And I did tape the twine that you kind of tie around your waist that's on the hula skirt to my desk to keep it from moving. And that really helped a, a lot when it came to trying to paint on the burnt umber. I love how this turned out looking in the end. I was kind of like, where are we going with this? But I love, love the final look. It just is so unique and different, and it really was a lot of fun to make as well. Once the hula skirt is all dry brushed, I go ahead and tape it back down onto the desk, and then I start grabbing those little groupings of the hula skirt that is tied up here on the twine, and I'm going to start braiding them. Now, the reason why I dry brushed the paint on first and then braided them is so that you have those colors that really look like woven through each other if you were to braid them first and then dry brush it the colors won't look like they they've been like weaved through each other i am so sorry you guys i hope you understand what i'm saying i'm not the best at describing things sometimes it's just you do have two completely different looks if you do them those ways once I had the first braid done, I started by gluing it onto the pumpkin on one end and then gluing it to the other. And I do kind of fan out those hula skirt pieces just so that it adheres really well to the pumpkin. And I did notice that for the size pumpkin that I have, I'm able to get two pieces of that braid out of one strand of the braid from the hula skirt. Goodness gracious, this is so difficult to explain. It's such an easy DIY, but of course it's gotta be so difficult to explain. After I decided to do a the first few braids, I did realize, wait a minute, let me just pop on a movie and go sit on the couch and just braid all of these. And that's exactly what I did. Once they were all braided, I went to town covering the pumpkin. And as you can see on this pumpkin, I did start in the divot of the pumpkin first just because if you do it the other way where you do the outer parts, it won't really have a very good shape to it. So I would start in the divots, obviously. And when you need another strand, all you have to do is just slide it right off the hula skirt where those knots are, and then just cut the knots off, add some hot glue. Again, like I said, I kind of fan those pieces out just so I can adhere it a little bit better to the pumpkin, and you can start wrapping it around and hot gluing it down on the other side. Then once I had a piece of the braided hula skirt and all of the divots, I started just going ahead and placing more of the braid pieces around the rest of the pumpkin until you have the pumpkin completely covered. I feel like this would also be a really neat acorn as well. I'm totally getting acorn vibes also. But since ours is a really neat pumpkin, we have to have our stem back and I just did the same exact steps as I did with the previous pumpkin stems, painted it and hot glued it right back on the pumpkin. Here is the pick from that little sunflower I also used earlier on the white pumpkin, and I did also put them on a few of the other ones as well. I just kind of decided that last minute, but I go ahead and just take one of the little sunflowers right off, and I did have to cut off that little piece because it sticks out a little bit too much, and I glued it right to where the stem part is on the pumpkin, and that's all I did for this one because I think this pumpkin just speaks volumes all on its own.
Now we are on pumpkin number five. For this pumpkin, I'm using the pumpkin that I had already had painted previously and was going to use in a different project, but my daughter bit a piece out of it. So I decided to go ahead and cover it up with one of these hats from Dollar Tree. So instead of doing the fabric like I was going to in the original one, I went ahead and placed the pumpkin right inside this hat and it almost is like the sweater look, you know, it which is super, super popular right now. And I mean, for a dollar and 25 cents plus a pumpkin, you get that gorgeous sweater look. So that's all I did was push the rest of the hat right down inside that hole that I had made that I was originally gonna put fabric in. And then I use another one of those stems from Dollar Tree. And now that I have a stem on the pumpkin, I add a little bit of hot glue going around the stem and then add some Spanish moss on to the pumpkin, just like we did a few of the previous other pumpkins. Then to kind of go with that white leather pumpkin a little bit more, I added some more of the leaves from my garland and I just glued those right onto the pumpkin right by the stem. And then I also made a little finger bow with this white and gray Dollar Tree ribbon and I glued it right to the stem as well. So I picked up these wood curl roses a little while back, about a few months ago, but I do still see them in Dollar Tree still to this day. And I've been wanting to use them for a while and I just really thought it would look really pretty on this pumpkin. So I simply glued one right here by the stem and by the little bow and I just think it looks so cute. I am just in love with how gorgeous and simple that pumpkin is. So for a little bonus DIY, I found this really large kind of shallow bucket at Dollar Tree and it has that really shiny white plasticky look to it. So I wanted to just kind of give it a really nice coat of some white chalk paint, but I knew it would take many, many coats to do that if I just used chalk paint. So I mixed in some baking soda with the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and then I literally just painted it on and you want it kind of like a melted icing like you know how if you put icing on a cake too soon and it melts that's how you want your paint to be I don't know where that came from but it that's just what it reminds me of but anyways I only did one coat on the complete outside and on the entire inside around the rims pretty much everywhere and that was it. I, I didn't really have to do another coat. I love using this paint technique because it just covers so well. I got these sticker letters off of Amazon. You get quite a few sheets for a really great price actually and they do remind me of the Ray Dunn font and I will have them linked down below in the description box. I have them in my Amazon store if you would like to check them out. So all I did was just place the word farm fresh on the front of the bucket. I meant words not word. And that's really all I did for this bucket. You could distress it or whatever you would like, but I love how this turned out. And for such a quick and easy DIY, it really looks so nice. And speaking of looking so nice, look at all these pumpkins. They are absolutely gorgeous. I love them so very much. And like I said, as you can see, they all can kind of go together, but you can use them separately as well. And I really love that about these pumpkins. These next two pumpkin DIYs are my absolute favorite and they are pumpkins number six and seven. For this DIY, I use these two pumpkins that Dollar Tree has had year after year. I believe they're just like a thick MDF board. I don't even think they're real wood, but all I did was remove the raffia bow off the one because the other one's bow had already fallen off. And then I used my zip sander to sand off all of the glitter. I do want to say I totally recommend these zip sanders. They are amazing. You can really put a lot of pressure right where you need to for the glitter to come off so fast. And I will have this link down below in the description box as well. These dang Dollar Tree tags, I thought I got lucky and they were both going to come off super easy because the first one did. It just pulled a little bit of the paint off, but it didn't leave any goo or anything like that. But the second one definitely gave me problems. So use a hair blow dryer or a heat gun like I'm doing here. Heat up the tag or sticker, whatever it is, and then you can use like a Cricut scraping tool or even a credit card to get it right off. 
If you ever do have any glue residue left over, Dollar Tree carries a product called Goo Gone and it works absolutely amazing. If you guys have any other recommendations on that, leave it down in the comments. I would love to try them out. I used my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint to paint both of the pumpkins white so that I had a nice blank background for the rub-on transfers. Once they were completely painted and dry, I went ahead and pulled the stem off of this one because it kept wanting to fall out, but I did go ahead and just set it to the side because I will distress it later. Have you guys seen these wood rub on transfers from Dollar Tree? They are amazing and they have three different styles from what I've seen so far. For this pumpkin, I'm going to be using the white kind of like a shiplap looking wood. I love this. It is so pretty. Sorry, my, my background kind of blends in with it, but you will definitely be able to see how gorgeous it turns out. Just like with any other rub-on transfer, you stick it onto your project and then you start rubbing it on with like a Cricut tool, a credit card. I use whatever I have on hand nearby. I do want to say you want to pay close attention to the edges and really rub those on so that it comes out nice and clean. Once the rub-on transfer is completely rubbed on and transferred onto your project, then you can start lifting up the backing and revealing that gorgeous transfer. I am obsessed with how beautiful this wood look turned out. And you guys, it is so easy to do. And you could even put several of those together to make like a bigger piece with a wood background. They are just such an easy project and or product to work with. I mean, come on, look how gorgeous that is. And all I had to do was sand off the excess on the side. And then I do take my zip sander and also kind of de-stress the stem on the pumpkin and I glue it back down. I do also end up painting the backs of both of these pumpkins white so that they look more finished as well. Next, I went ahead and did the exact same steps with the other pumpkin and the darker wood look on the rub-on transfer. I really love this wood look as well. I think it is really, really pretty and it is so realistic. Like, I'm actually really surprised how great these transfers look and they just don't look cheap at all. Like, it looks like real wood. And I did the exact same steps, like I said, and also distressed the stem to this pumpkin as well. And look at that, you guys. Can we just get a moment of silence? Because that is gorgeous. Now, because I'm going to be putting a decal on here, if you are just placing like a sticker or not putting anything on where you have to peel off a of backing, you do not have to do this step. But I did want to put a real thin layer of Mod Podge on top of here so that it lasts a very long time. And also so that when I peel off the backing to my decal, like this one here, which I got off of Cricut Design Space, and when I peel this backing off, it's not going to peel off any of the rub-on transfer, which it definitely would have if we did not do the Mod Podge step. But again, like I said, you don't have to worry about the Mod Podge if you are not peeling anything off. I placed this decal down and as you could see, I rubbed my finger really lightly just across the words, not making it really stick down to the backing so that when I peeled it off, it was also less likely to peel off any of the rub on transfer and it worked perfect. For the decal on the darker pumpkin, I actually made it myself in Cricut Design Space and I saved it to share so that you guys could go into Cricut Design Space, look up either Gleesman Designs or Hello There Bootyful, and this decal will pop up for you to use. If I'm able to get a link to that, I will put it down in the description box. I also found these Halloween rub-on transfers at Dollar Tree, and I thought the ghosts on here were perfect for this project, especially because of the saying. So I just cut out the ghosts and placed them where I want them on the pumpkin. And just like any other rub-on transfer, you put it on, kind of rub it down, and peel off the backing. Dollar Tree also has really cute ghost stickers right now that are out, and you could also get some ghosts off of Cricut Design Space to put on here. And like I said, I did place two of those ghosts that I cut out onto this pumpkin. Look at how this is turning out so far. I love that you can actually kind of see through the ghosts like they were actual ghosts. This next step was total personal preference. I just made some really little teeny tiny bows out of a Dollar Tree gingham ribbon and a Dollar Tree like white and black jute twine that's twisted together. And I just glued those little tiny bows right to the ghost's heads. 
Let me know down in the comments if you guys ever get these random boxes of ribbon at Dollar Tree. It usually has a bunch of different quality and styles of ribbon in it. And I got this really pretty white and black ribbon out of it. I love the style of the ribbon. And I just make a simple bow by creating that cancer awareness shape ribbon and grabbing it up here at the top in the center, bringing it down and then pinching it at the center down at the bottom. Then I just use the black cotton twine, which I know I said jute twine previously, but it is the cotton twine. And then I just tie it into place so that the bow, the bow holds its shape. Goodness gracious, I cannot talk today. Once you have the bow tied in the center and it's nice and secure, you can fluff out your loops and make sure your tails are at the length that you like them. And I was going to just kind of cut them just regularly and then that didn't work out very well. So I went ahead and dovetailed both of the ends on the bow. I love making these bows because they really are quick and easy and they just come out perfect every single time. And all I did was hot glue it right up here at the top but kind of off to the side and I just love that look. I then used some of the lamb's ear leaves that were on the garland on my desk and I just hot glued them back behind the bow. I thought it looked perfect just like this, but of course I have to go a step further and I use some of these Dollar Tree pit berries and all you have to do is take them and wrap them around a pencil quite a few times and then you can just kind of slide it right off the pencil and pull it out to how you can make it really however spirally you want it just depending on how far out you pull it. I used my scissors to cut it down to the size of the piece that I wanted and then all I had to do was add a little bit of hot glue at the bottom of it and then I glued it behind the bow but in front of the stem. Once I had that piece glued on the white pumpkin was done and I moved on to the darker pumpkin and like I said I wanted them to be different but also go together so I used that same white and black ribbon made a bow and then used a buffalo check ribbon to make a smaller bow and I just glued it onto the stem and then did the same thing with the pit berries on this pumpkin as I did the first one. And you guys, I love, love, love these. I posted these on my TikTok and they went crazy. I asked them which one was their favorite and the Hello Bootyful is definitely by far winning. Let me know which one is your guys' favorite as well down in the comments. And now let's move on to pumpkin DIY number eight. For this DIY, I'm using one of these wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I believe it's around eight inches and it's going to be our base. And then Dollar Tree carries these wood stems and they actually have them in several different shapes, like some are longer and some are wider. And I really liked these like kind of a wider circle ones. So I went ahead and opened the bag and picked out four that were mostly similar in shape and were biggest at least that I could tell and then I went in with the white rust-oleum chalk paint and started to paint that wood piece from Dollar Tree not completely covering it I'm doing more of like a heavy dry brush technique but letting some of that wood color still show through for the wood stems, I want them to have a nice size white circle in the center of them. You want to barely kind of see the outer part of the wood stem. And here's the thing. I tried doing it with a paint pen first. And let me tell you, these wood stems just absorbed that right away. Like it ate it up immediately. So I just used the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white. And it worked out perfect with a little paintbrush. I did go ahead and repeat those steps to all four of these wood stems. Once all the white circles on the wood stems were dry, I went ahead and placed them down onto the base where I wanted them to be before I glued them on. And then once I had them where I wanted them, I just kind of tried placing them back in that same spot. But if I needed to move them over a little bit, I could still do that. You want to make sure that your wood piece does have a little bit enough room to where you have a little bit of space between each one of those wood stems. At first I was going to use these Dollar Tree sticker letters because I wanted to show you guys that these sticker letters from Dollar Tree definitely work perfect for this DIY as well. So if you do not have the Amazon stickers that 
or do not want to get the Amazon stickers that I have, you definitely can use many other sticker letters that you would like. As for me and my home, I am absolutely obsessed with this Ray Dunn style font, and I just went ahead and placed the H, the M, and the E down onto these wood stems here in the center where I painted that white circle so that it really pops out really nice. And of course, for the O, we have to do a pumpkin. So I found these rub on transfers at Dollar Tree and I just simply cut out the pumpkin that I wanted. And all I have to do is peel off the backing. And again, just like any other rub on transfer, rub it on, peel it off, and you have a really cute little pumpkin O. Next, I'm going to use some of the Dollar Tree Spanish moss. And I just pull a little bit out, not a whole bunch. And I'm going to kind of like spread it out so that it's really thin and I add some glue between each one of the pumpkins and on the ends and I'm just going to start kind of weaving that Spanish moss throughout each one of the pumpkins and I do also place some of that Spanish moss on the back as well so that it just kind of looks like they are just sitting in this little mound of Spanish moss and it looks so cute. Not only is the O on the wood stem a pumpkin, but the wood stems themselves are also going to be little pumpkins. And it was raining and I did not feel like going outside in the rain to grab a stick out of the yard. So I seen this brown stem on a Dollar Tree pumpkin pick that I had gotten recently. So I just cut it down to little teeny tiny stick pieces. And then I glue them at the top of the wood stems. But when I glue them down, I don't glue them perfectly straight like one I'll glue it straight in the center and like that one I just put off to the side and crook it a little bit so that they all kind of have their own little character. Once I have the stems in place I want this to be a little bit more like cutesy rustic if you know what I'm saying so I take the tiniest tiniest bit of Spanish moss and I glue it around the stems up here on the pumpkins and I mean as you can see the tiniest little amount is all you need. I lost a little bit of footage of me making the bows, but I did make two little twine bows and two little gingham bows, and then I just alternated them on the stems of the pumpkins, and I love how this DIY turned out. Okay friends, now we are on pumpkin number nine. For this DIY, I actually have to give a huge shout out to Kathy Jo DIY. She inspired me so much when she created this DIY right here with the chicken wire. So I put my own little spin on it and I absolutely love how it came out. I used two Dollar Tree pumpkin wreath forms and I just went ahead and spray painted both of them white. Now I have seen a few crafters haul some Dollar Tree chicken wire, but I was not one of the lucky ones to find that. So I got this very inexpensive chicken wire off of Amazon. And if you would like to check it out, I will leave a link down in the description box. I took the end of the chicken wire and I started on one side of the pumpkin and I just started wrapping those little wire pieces around the pumpkin wreath form. And Kathy Jo wrapped her pumpkin from the outside and I am taking the chicken wire and kind of making it flush with the inside of the pumpkin. I want to have the bars on the pumpkin wreath form on the outside of the chicken wire. So all I'm going to do is continue wrapping those little strands around the pumpkin wreath form and kind of pressing down with my hand and making sure that it is nice and scooped and molded with the inside of the pumpkin wreath form. So again, you just cut off any excess and you're going to simply go around the pumpkin and start pushing that chicken wire down in, molding it really nice. And it is actually pretty easy how it really molds itself down in there. And then you just cut off the excess and start taking those little wire parts and just twisting it around the pumpkin wreath form until you have until you have the pumpkin completely covered. Once the chicken wire is down in the curve of the pumpkin wreath form and all wrapped around, this is what it should look like. And I did want to go ahead and do the stem up here at the top. So I just grabbed one of those pieces of the chicken wire that I had cut off from when I was wrapping the pumpkin and I just placed it onto the stem part and again just started twisting those little wire pieces around the pumpkin wreath form so that the chicken wire stays in place. And again I did go ahead and do this to two of the Dollar Tree pumpkin wreath forms. 
For this DIY, you will need a base, and I'm using one of these thinner wood pieces from Dollar Tree, and I believe it's like the 12 foot or 12, 12 foot, 12 inch piece. And I just take the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I painted the entire wood piece white. The quickest and easiest way to glue the pumpkin wreath form to your base is to use something to kind of prop it up against like I did with my paint thing here. And I'm just going to make sure that when I glue it down, I want the pumpkin wreath form to be standing straight up and down. So I prop it up first, make sure that it is straight up and down, and then I move the wreath form, add some E6000 and hot glue, and then I place it back down, gluing it to the side of that wood piece from Dollar Tree. And then I go ahead and add some more hot glue just to make it a little bit more secure. For the greenery, I'm going to be using these greenery picks from Dollar Tree, and I really love these picks. I think they are perfect almost for all year round. They just are really, really pretty. And the name is just greenery, so I'm not exactly sure what it what it really is, but I do really think it is pretty. And if you do not like the powdery type stuff on it, it is very easy to wipe it off or wash it off. I just simply cut the pick apart and make two little individual bundles and I just kind of place them on either side of each other. And then I suggest using floral tape, but all I had on hand was the red floral wire from Dollar Tree just to kind of keep this greenery all together. And that's what I kind of like to do. I will put my greenery together and then when I'm adding the florals or any other types of picks, I will kind of place those down on top and not attach those until I have all of the rest of the florals together. You'll see what I mean. So next I'm going to use some of these foxtails and I just use a few of those and cut those off. And then I place a couple on either side of the greenery just so that it has a nice, even pretty look. And I do like to take a lot of my greenery pieces and florals and I will push the leaves up closer towards the flower or whatever is up at the top just so that it has a more fuller look. And again, as you can see, I don't use any floral wire or floral tape yet with these. I just place them where I want them because with the florals, I do know that I move them around a lot. So I just place them down kind of where I want them to be for now. Dollar Tree also has these beautiful farmhouse hydrangeas and I use them in that like bluish green color as well as this off white color. And then I also found this farmhouse pick from Dollar Tree that I just thought was really, really pretty and I love the color. So I'm going to take those flowers and just kind of place these where I want them first. And with my flowers, I like to take it and just, as you can see right there, bend it just at the head of the flower so that it will face forward and not like to the sides, if you know what I mean. And again, I make two little bundles, making sure I push that greenery up so it is more full. And then once I have the colors how I like them, I just go ahead and like kind of bend those heads again and place them into the rest of the flowers where I want them. And pretty much everything that I do on one side, I do on the other. So after I add these flowers, I do go ahead and add the same ones on the other side as well. I do know that I want to add a little pumpkin and a few other smaller pumpkins on the inside of this piece and in the center. So I do want to make sure that I have a little bit of space for when it is time to do that. Before I add the smaller pumpkin in the center, I do want to add a few other little things like these pumpkin picks from Dollar Tree. I think they are so adorable. They're more of like a floral pick with a pumpkin in it, but I did go ahead and just kind of cut each piece apart so that I can lay them into the florals a little bit more individually. And I do want to say that you could also glue, like hot glue a piece of the, goodness gracious, I'm having a mind blank right now, um, floral foam from Dollar Tree to that wood piece. And it would definitely be easy to just push your florals or your greeneries into that. However, I didn't want to glue anything down because I do want to make sure that I'm able to kind of change anything out if I did want to do that. I just took the little pieces and placed them where I wanted them to be. And then again, it made sure I had that space where I can place the pumpkin 
And I'm also going to kind of grab it right here in the center, collecting all of the stems all like in one area. And then I do kind of place little things here and there. This is where you can kind of fix your florals and your greeneries to however you would like them to be. And then I used some Dollar Tree floral tape just to keep all of the pieces together. At this point, you could glue it down onto the wood, but I just simply set it down just in case I do want to change anything out. Nothing is absolutely permanent. And I just kind of fluff it out and play with it and kind of place everything where I want it to go. Okay, everyone, I know you have got to have at least heard about the leather pumpkins from Dollar Tree. Everyone is talking about the leather pumpkins and the sweater pumpkins. So I just take a few of these little pumpkins and they do have the clip on the back. So I just clip them right to some of the stems on the florals or the greeneries so that they stay in place. Once I have those in place, I add this cute little pumpkin that I made last year, which I just painted it white and added some twine around the stem and some pit berries. I place it right in the center and I just think that looks absolutely adorable. When it comes time to add the pumpkin wreath form on the other side, all I do is lift the greenery up and slide the wreath form all the way underneath the greenery to where it is kind of butting up against that wood piece, just like we did on the other side. And then before I glue it obviously down at the bottom, you want to attach it up here at the top so that it is a lot easier to glue it at the bottom. And all I did was attach it with a few zip ties. I place the zip ties on either side of the stems of the pumpkins and then I just cut off the excess and kind of twisted them around so that nothing was showing. Now that the top is secure, you can turn it on its side and then kind of lift the pumpkin wreath form up that's up against the wood piece. Add some hot glue. I do recommend E6000 as well, but I forgot. And then you can just kind of place the pumpkin wreath form back onto that wood piece and it stands straight up. And of course, after I decide to put that other side on, then I decide to add some more sweater pumpkins instead of doing it beforehand, but we got them in there. I've had this bow for probably about six months. I made it a long time ago and I just thought it would look really cute with this project. So I just hot glued it up here at the top by the stem. Once I had the bow glued on, I also used some more of these Dollar Tree leather tags. I used the leaf one for this one though that says grateful and all I did was cut it off of the pumpkin so that they are separate because you do get two in a pack. And then I just kind of wrapped the leather strap over and around the bow and pulled it right down in at the center and that was it and this DIY was done. And here is a look at how this gorgeous DIY turned out. A huge, huge thank you to Kathy Longlow for buying me the coffees. I appreciate it so much. Buy me a coffee is a just fun, cute way that you can help support your favorite creators. And I do always have a link down in the description box. And friends, always remember to be kind to one another. You never know what you say or what you do can affect someone's life tremendously. Thank you so much for watching. Always know that I believe in you and I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye.